Prediction of lottery numbers by the spirits. As in Thailand, Burma's legal lotteries, like the state lottery, are passive. That is, lottery tickets have pre-printed numbers. Beyond these, illegal active lotteries invite the gamblers to select the numbers they wish to bet on. The Burmese illegal lotteries belong to the latter category and are based on the draws of the state lotteries, the Burmese and the state, Thai state lotteries. The novel prosperity cults that predict the winning lottery numbers are exclu exclusively linked to the illegal lotteries. The two mo most popular illegal lotteries in Burma are the three-digit Thai lottery, which is based on the bi-monthly uh, draws of the Thai state lottery in Bangkok, and the two-digit uh, lottery based on the draws of the Burmese state lottery. The three-digit uh, lottery uh, seems to have begun in the lower Burma in the 1980s, while the two-digit uh, lottery began around the 19, uh, 1996. These lotteries have been widely popular since the mid-1990s. According to several informants involved in the sale of the lottery tickets, about 70-80% of the people in their respective areas bet in illegal lotteries. This is in Mandalay. This probably holds for the rest of Mandalay, too. Uh, the draw for the two-digit lottery is held twice a day, Monday th uh, through Friday at 12 p.m. and at uh, 4.30 p.m. Draws for the uh, three-digit uh, lottery are held twice a month in Bangkok, on the first day of the month and on the 16th. Depending on the financial resources of the one organizing illegal lotteries, an upper limit for the amount uh, for betting might or might not be established. One can win large amounts of money in this lottery. In the two-digit uh, lottery, one gets 80 times of the amount one has betted. In the three-digit lottery, one gets 550 times of the amount. All the new temples that I mentioned earlier tend to be crowded one to three days before the twice-monthly uh, twice draw of the Thai three-digit lottery. As in Thailand and China, the winning numbers in Burma are assumed to be out there to be interpreted and found through uh, religious means. Guillaume Rosenberg's study, and he's a, a French anthropologist, based on fieldwork in the early 2000s of illegal lotteries, exclusively examined monks who um, predicted lot the winning lottery numbers. In these cases, the lottery numbers were predicted indirectly by coded language. So the audience picked up a phrase from the monk's sermon and followed a traditional Burmese system of correspondences as they tried to decode it. Such decoding procedures were also common in the cults I have investigated. But what seems to be a recent innovation in the cults of the guardians of the treasure trove is that the numbers are frequently given directly and uncoded, especially by mediums possessed by the child guardians of the treasure trove. Predictions uh, of the winning lottery numbers in the Burmese two-digit and the Thai three-digit uh, illegal lotteries are important in, in these novel cults. Both mediums and devotees predict the winning lottery numbers while um, possessed by the guardians of the tre uh, treasure trove, especially the child spirits from the treasure trove. Some devotees receive the winning lottery numbers from these spirits in their dreams when ordinary f female devotees are possessed during possession dances by, by the child guardian spirits, they uh, display childlike behavior. They smile and laugh, suck on lollipops, become defiant, they're quarreling among themselves and with the audience, they play football, they eat candy, and offer candy to the audience. In this state, they frequently predict uh, lottery numbers with their fingers. One woman, while possessed by the children from the treasure trove, uh, raised her fingers to indicate winning uh, two-digit lottery numbers, and she also wrote them on the floor with her fingers. When semi-professional mediums are possessed by the children from the treasure trove and predict the winning lottery numbers, they are mostly seated in a temple. Although the female mediums are older than most of their clients, 
They address them as grandpa, grandma, older sister, older brother, and so forth. Because the spirits are, uh, possessing them are supposed to be uh, four, four to six year old children. They speak in a childlike, high pitched voice, pout their lips, give moral lessons, ask for toys, uh, soft drinks, lipstick, candy. Most importantly, they, ask, they also ask for donations intended for promoting and maintaining the Buddha's dispensation. Moreover, these child spirits predict lottery numbers directly, giving the actual numbers. When they predict the winning lottery numbers, they frequently use the Burmese gambling language that has developed within the Burmese illegal lotteries. The devotees are usually equipped with notebooks in, in which they write down the um, winning uh, the, the lottery numbers. Uh, in possession rituals that I recorded in December 2014 at a pagoda outside Mandalay, a female medium was possessed by the children from the treasure trove. She was seated uh, in front of the statues of these children in the cave temple situated within the pagoda compound. First, she recited some texts and then she be became possessed, saying to a man in his late uh, 30s, um, that she is happy to see him again, and that is uh, uh, that they, that is the spirits, have been generous to, to him and his wife. Possessed by the child spirit, she gave uh, three sets of um, three digits and asked uh, him to bet on these numbers because they will be the winning numbers that will hit the jackpot. She also instructed him uh, that he does not need to do R not to do, uh, to do R. R uh, refers to the English word round and is a technical word in gambling uh, jargon, meaning that one should uh, bet on all combinations of a set of digits. In the above example, the client should uh, thus bet on the numbers in exactly the order she recited them. Moreover, there is indeterminacy. While uh, possessed, the medium uh, gave three, th three sets of numbers, but did not say when they would hit the jackpot. It is mostly thought, as well as supported by how possessed mediums articulate the matter, that the numbers that the possessed mediums have provided will eventually be the winning numbers. There is thus indeterminacy. The majority of the devotees blamed neither themselves nor the spirits if they do not hit the jackpot. They must uh, just continue betting. The numbers are correct, they think. Their trust in the spirits thus mostly prevents them from concluding that the numbers are wrong. In the Burmese cults, devotees who have achieved success in business or hit the jackpot in the lottery both ascribe their success to the spirits and frequently spend considerable economic resources uh, for Buddhist purposes. They build or renovate pagodas, hold uh, lavish merit-making ceremonies, especially by giving food to the monks. They engage in Buddhist practice and observe Buddhist morality. For instance, one man in his 40s working as a carpenter said in 2015 that for every uh, 500,000 chat, the Burmese uh, currency, he earns, he, he donates 300,000 for Buddhist ends. He explained that Nagamero gives him work so that he can earn money. For that reason, he must give something in return, that is, a karmic merit from Buddhist merit making. He and his wife had built um, uh, two pagodas and one monastery and shared merit with Nagamero. If they do not give uh, offerings to uh, Nagamero and uh, do not promote Buddhism, they will run into economic difficulties. There are also success stories. One woman who was 45 years old in 2014 um, worked as a diamond dealer and lived in a palatial building in Mandalay. In her youth, she was poor and sold palm tree roots and boiled beans uh, on the roadside. As she got married, she realized that he had a connection to the treasure trove at Thai Set. She began turning to Nagamedo and made wishes to her. After that, her business improved and she often received uh, the winning lottery numbers from the guardians of the treasure trove. 
Eventually, she became wealthy, mainly, as she explained, through the money she won uh, on the illegal lottery, and uh, thereby she could build her grandiose residence. In one year, she hit uh, the jackpot 18 times in the, the three-digit um, lottery, that is, 18 times out of 24 annual draws. She received the lottery numbers from the guardians of the treasure trove and attributed her success to them. In return, she spends um, huge amounts of, um, of money for Buddhist causes and shares uh, merit with the spirits. She has donated 10 million chat for several, uh, several times, and uh, she showed me her donation letters. Many others credited spirits for success in business and lottery victories that enabled them to build their own houses. I heard many such stories. <clears throat> Uh, in this way, Burmese prosperity Buddhism is constrained by Buddhist morality and duties. Many of my informants uh, claim to have achieved uh, business success and acquired wealth through the guardians of the treasure trove, or Bomingau, or both. At the same time, in return for receiving such help, the cults require them to reciprocate by giving a return gift as a token of respect and uh, supporting Buddhism and sharing merit with them. Promoting Buddhism may, as the examples given earlier demonstrate, entail giving donations to the uh, pagoda and alms to the monks, building or repairing pagodas or engaging in Buddhist practice, including observing Buddhist morality, uh, which are traditional Buddhist merit-making act activities, and sharing karmic merit with the spirits. All these acts are perceived as serving to maintain and expand the Buddha's dispensation in society. Individual uh, religiosity is thus viewed as uh, being closely intertwined with the project of the Buddhist community of maintaining the Buddha's dispensation. This intimate uh, relationship between the individual and public spheres characterized uh, the novel cults. Burmese uh, prosperity Buddhism thus serves to maintain Buddhist traditions, morality, and other values. This is what I have called the, the moralization of wealth acquisition, which I discussed in an earlier section. It means that devotees uh, are re required to support the Buddha's dispensation in, re in return for help from the spirits, lest they will face difficulties. This is an inbuilt reciprocating mechanism that compels devotees who have a connection to the spirits and have gained some material benefits through them to re redistribute financial gains by donations for Buddhist ends and or by embodying uh, Buddhism through practice, whereupon they must share merit with the spirits. The majority of my informants from the temples dedicated uh, to the guardians of the treasure trove belong to the lower middle classes. However, a considerable number also belong to the middle classes, mainly jade dealers, real estate agents, and a few were wealthy people belonging to the upper middle classes. Many of these relatively uh, wealthy people, including ministers and military officers, and owners of big companies and education centers went to the Bomingang Temple. A majority of all of these people of various socio-economic classes played the illegal lotteries. This social complexity deviates from the norm in Western societies where the poor are overrepresented in lottery part participation. One reason for this might be that most people in Burma, including the middle classes, are rather poor in comparison to other countries, I cannot easily afford luxury products that are available on the global market. Moreover, the incorporation of technical gambling language, known to many in, Burma, uh, in urban areas, and gambling practices into the Buddhist rituals or the prosperity cults, demonstrates how the novel cults have been shaped by new socio-economic socio practices. Such close uh, relationships uh, between novel prosperity cults and economic practices were also observed in Vietnam by the anthropologist Philip Taylor. In Burma, 
Spirits may be considered um, supernatural bookmakers who provide um, a sense of certainty in a risky game that is determined entirely by chance. Compared to other forms of gambling, lotteries are characterized by an extremely low probability of winning and the lowest payout ratio. Much research has attempted to resolve the conundrum of why people nevertheless buy lottery tickets. For the devotees, the important matter is that these cults provide a sense of control and pre predictability of something that is essentially beyond control. As uncertainty tends to characterize everyday life in modernity, especially in times of modernization and change, religious practice and imagination that can provide a sense of predictability and control demonstrate how modernization and economic development can actually contribute to the proliferation of religious cults. Modernization and the further liberalization of the market economy that were implemented since the opening up of Burma in 2011 have thus entailed an increase and a flourishing of Buddhist practice. In contrast to prosperity cults in some other Buddhist countries in the region, these cults are perceived to be intrinsically Buddhist and constitute an articulation of Buddhist identity, including uh, by differentiating these cults from the Nat cult of the 37 Lords, which I mentioned in an earlier section.